along, of course, with uh, walking on the moon for Apollo 12, you actually were part of another historic mission, part of America's first space station, Skylab. How many days uh, were you on board Skylab for? I was there 59 days. There were three flights on Skylab. What we wanted to do uh, is we had some uh, hardware left over after Apollo, and we said, what do we need to do that we could do with this hardware? Well, we could start, we know that our next effort to understand and live in space is a space station, like the International Space Station up there now. Maybe if we hollowed out one of these stages and built a little space station kind of thing in there, you know, where you could do experiments, Mm. you could do medical tests, then we could find out maybe more than we know now about living in space And then when we built our big space station, Freedom, then we would, International Space Station, then we we could build it better. And that's what we did. The first flight was up there 28 days. They learned some things. We went up for 59 days. We learned a lot more. And then the last crew went up for 84. They learned a lot more. That's all that that little space station could do, but we use that information to make the international help make the international space station the success it is now. We were talking yesterday a little bit. You were actually well known for your unique music, uh, not only on the way to the moon, but on Skylab. What were some of the songs that you would uh, relax to and listen to in space? Well, one of our things I read uh, is that. People are imprinted with their favorite music when they're in high school and college, that age. And it may be true for me because I like 50s rock and roll. That's what I liked in the 50s. That's what I listen to even now. And so that's what I took on my tape uh, that I took to the moon and in Skylab. Now, Pete Conrad on the trip to the moon, he was a country music fan, so he took a lot of country music. And Dick Gordon was a classical music fan, so he took that. One of the songs that I had on my tape was Sugar Sugar by the Archies. <laughs> now, maybe most of your listeners don't even know what that is. But that's a very energetic song of that era. And uh, we all loved it because it we'd, we'd float above our couches there on the way to the moon or home. And we'd play that in our tape, one tape recorder. We all had tapes, but only one tape recorder. We'd play that because that gave us all this energy and excitement and positive attitude. It was fun. We, we had, but that, that's the kind of music I had on uh, Apollo. In Skylab, I had the same sort of thing. <laughs> and I used it particularly when I rode the bicycle ergometer. This was, you know, like these bicycles you wear, go. I mean, you use in the gym, except we were connected up to a devices that could measure the CO2 coming out of our lungs and the oxygen going in and our blood pressure and a vector cardiogram on our heart, all these things to see what was going on up in space as opposed to on Earth. And so I enjoyed my music, and Owen and Jack Lausma that went with me there, they had their music. They liked it. But after the third crew came home, this was fun for me. I think of it from time to time. Ed Gibson, who was on the third crew, when they asked him in our debriefings which music he liked best, he said, I like Al Bean's music the best. When I would get on that bicycle ergometer and really have to pedal and work, I'd put on his music because it had all this energy in it and all this excitement. So that's the music I listen to now. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis is my favorite singer and musician and piano player. So you can see I'm an older guy. I'm 84. But uh, your listeners are all going to have their favorite music, and I think their favorite music is going to stick with them the rest of their life. (laughs) And that's our goal here. That's what we try to do. Um, Yes.